Hi, I'm Steve Gilmore. This is the Gilmore Gang, and uh, we've got a motley crew here today. No. Yes, we do. We have Scoble on a new uh, camera, but he's just switched off of it at the last second. He was almost an Apple boy, and then he... Well, I, I, I'm back on my Logitech because you guys complain about the sharpness, but I want to show off the new uh, Facebook search engine, which I bet Danny and I are going to talk a little bit about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do a search for cameras that people on Facebook who like Robert Scoble like. <laughs> Danny is Danny Sullivan. As long as you're not searching for my porn behavior on Facebook, that's just fine. Porn that people who like Robert Scoble like. Oh, my there God. I'm go. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. Ni very nice. And uh, can I have that shot uh, of Scoble for a second? Thank you. Happy birthday, Robert. Yeah, happy Thank you. birthday to you. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Robert. Yeah, thanks. Pornography uh, graduates that people who follow Robert Skull will follow. <laughs> <laughs> How do you graduate from pornography? Oh, photos of pornography that people who follow Robert Skull will like. Wow. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let me just... Uh, just got distracted. Photo of porn slip. star. I think I got on the wrong show. Uh, uh, I Danny to... Sullivan likes. This isn't oh, a show. Cool. This is real. Uh, <laughs> welcome to uh, Kevin Marks. I don't, <laughs> I don't that, have access to this Facebook search thing, which is probably a good thing. Kevin Marks, aka Headroom, and uh, and the yep. other John, since we don't have another John, is the John Toshak. Welcome, John. Speaking of John and fecal transplant. Okay. <laughs> We've got to talk about the story. Yeah, we do. Just after the audio fails. Okay, uh, so I think we've heard what? Yeah, I, I know. I'm... <coughs> oh boy, photos of porn stars brings up stuff too racy to show on Gilmore Hay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, let me verify that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. You wanted to get on Showtime. This is the way to do it. Oh, yeah. there's photos of porn. We were stars. on Showtime at some point a long time ago. Mm, interesting. Weren't we? Yeah. We were on something. <laughs> Speaking of drugs in the movies. <laughs> oh, um, oh, dear. Yeah, that was in the Wall Street Journal. It's, a, it's a, you know, a Republican meme. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm back on Robert's search. Okay, let's. <laughs> Turn that off. Oh dear! I didn't, you draw enemy that Photos way. Photos of porn stars. Okay. All right. Is anybody going to turn this into something actionable? There you go. Is it too early to discuss the fecal transplant technology? <laughs> By lawyers, you mean? Come on, talk about the Facebook search thing. That that's a big. Tech yeah. Well, story. you and Robert. All right. Ken Scoble, we can't use that angle. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> All right. So you guys were at the uh, at the Facebook uh, uh, graph search, pardon the expression, uh, event. So, which of you wants to talk about it? Well, it it uh, lets you do things like uh, this, right? My friends who follow Danny Sullivan, right? And you get a, a list of people, cool people. Uh, it's. It has a few things. So it, it shows people, interests, and places. And I, maybe one other thing I'm forgetting. But it lets you do things like show me all employees at Twitter. Show me all employees at Twitter who program in PHP or who like PHP. Uh, so it's great for recruiting. It's great for dating. Show me all single women who live in San Francisco who uh, like dogs <laughs> you know, uh, and keep going, right? Who, who like programming and dogs. Who, you know. Do you like programming uh, dogs? Yeah, it lets you find places or restaurants near you. So show me all Mexican restaurants my friends have liked in Half Moon Bay. Um, that kind of stuff. And Danny, what kinds of ser searches have you been doing other than the salacious ones? Um, you know, I was trying to see things that were matching up between, say, um, my wife and some of her friends recently. Um, 
Which, which is interesting they, because they don't. It, it starts to expose some of the flaws that Facebook has. I mean, the the idea is that wow, you know, you're going to be able to discover all the things that people like based on all the like data that's out there. But she doesn't like a whole. Lot, she's on Facebook, but doesn't like a whole lot of things. Her friends on Facebook, they don't like a whole lot of things necessarily. And so it's like, like one of her best friends, they only matched up on one song, and you know, they like a lot more music that that's the same than that. And so it's interesting to see how that sort of stuff um, doesn't kind of mesh. And that's one of the the challenges that they're going to. Uh, to have with this, that that the idea is that Facebook is trying to be this digital representation of ourselves. So it really wants us to have a virtual self on Facebook that likes all the things that we like in real life and does all the things that we go to in real life, has all the things that we see through our photos in real life. But in reality, our, our Facebook representation is far less than our real representation. Yeah, my camera's not focusing. Oh, here we go. So this one's my friends who like the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And by the way, EFF is really uh, not happy about this search because, you know, on the top are uh, normal things, but this could uh, <coughs> be used for political repercussions against people. Um, and they, they just posted a whole post about how to turn your privacy so that these searches are harder. Me, I just, you know, don't, don't put anything on Facebook you don't want other people to see because that's... You know, now it's getting easier. And it, by the way, uh, Danny, they, they only uh, let you do uh, searches of stuff really on your bio right now. Uh, right. For instance, I can do a, a search like show me all photos that my friends have liked or show me all photos that I have liked, which is really cool. But it doesn't let me see uh, links that I've liked or, or uh, co anything about content, anything about um, you know, posts that have something in them. It also doesn't let me – so it, it only shows one or two data types from that standpoint. It also doesn't let me see anything that's uh, in the open graph. So I, I can say, show me friends who like Skrillex, but I can't say, show me friends who are listening to Skrillex. Uh, and clearly that's going to be possible in the future, but they've, they've really constrained the sets of searches that you can do. It, and they're, they're, they told me, that, and Danny, that they're rolling this out very slowly. I think they're going slowly to watch the kinds of searches we're doing and see what kind of feedback happens from the first people who are led on the system. You know, where are the privacy concerns here? And I bet they're going to roll, they're going to adjust what's av available. They did show that we're only allowed to see what we're allowed to see. So, like Danny, if, if Danny has uh, sent a photo to his family group, for instance, um, I can't see that. So even though I can search for, you know, photos that Danny has liked or photos that Danny has, you know, uh, commented on, I, and I don't even think I can do comment on, but I, I can't see that photo because the privacy is pretty, pretty good here, um, at least from content aspects. But most people don't realize that now you can't turn off your bio. Uh, you have to make yourself searchable, and uh, we can see all we can do sort all sorts of stuff. You know, for instance, Scott Rafer studied uh, at the University of Pennsylvania, so I could say, "Show me all programmers who studied at the University of Pennsylvania," or "Show me all founders who were who studied at the University of Pennsylvania." Uh, you can just keep you know doing all sorts of fun searches to find lists of people and groups of people and um, it's a lot of fun to play with. Anything to add to that, Danny? I don't know. No, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's important to stress that there's nothing people are able to find that, you know, it's, it is not causing things that you have posted to suddenly become um, public when they were private before. That it, it doesn't do that. But what it is causing is that people may find stuff that kind of effectively was private just by the nature of being lost in all the Facebook stuff that was out there. It's kind of like when Timeline came along where you, know, you had Timeline and then suddenly it made it really easy to go back and see what people were doing at particular times of the year, you know, in months and so like that. And it wasn't that that stuff wasn't visible. It's just that it wasn't yeah. organized. And so this is making it very easy to organize some of that stuff as well. And Facebook, in preparation for this, took away the ability for people to opt out of being in the search feature, um, which I think is kind of disappointing. I think they, they should let you have that ability. It's kind of like saying um, if you go into the real world with uh, web pages, you know, if you build a website and you don't want that website to be in Google or you don't want information to be out there, you know, you can block it. And so yeah. you kind of don't have the ability with Facebook to block um, 
easily a lot of this stuff. You have to go through and start, you know, tick talking here and there and there. And there's some things you can't block at all. Um, in particular, the likes. And it, you know, any kind of liking activity that you do stays public. And there's a reason why some people might actually want to like something and have that information flow out to their friends, but they don't necessarily want it to be liked and flow out to the public. Say you've got a pediatrician, right? You might want people to know this is a good pediatrician if they really are friends with you, but you don't want the whole world to necessarily know your, your child's pediatrician. And so, you know, that's some of those things that I think Facebook is going to have to think through more. Well, the real yeah. question, the real question is whether or not this is going to drive uh, adoption of like liking as a strategy for communicating. I I think it'll do both things. People will remove some likes because oh, I I liked, you know, I for for instance, there's a hundred thousand people on pa on Facebook who have liked porn, uh, and put that on there. And when they see this, they might realize, hmm, I don't want that exposed to the world. But on the other hand, other people will say, man, that's cool that it, people can find me and I like porn and I'm going to like it. <laughs> so it'll be very fascinating to see what, what changes happen because of this. I've already uh, found several people that I wanted to be connected to or friended uh, that I hadn't known were on Facebook through this. So it, it has already changed my behavior. Um, by the way, um, Mo said, I thought uh, Facebook was developing for mobile and this is not yet available on mobile. Um, it also does not yet have an API, and both things I asked about, and both things they're working on, and so I, I would expect over the next six months to see both an API for this and a mobile client, uh, or built, have this feature built into the mobile. Danny, have you heard anything like that, or...? I haven't, and it's it's interesting because when I went on to mobile, I wanted to kind of play with it, and I realized, oh, I, I don't have it. But yeah. one of the nice things is, is that mobile still allows me to do what the old search was because once you upgrade to this, you lose the old ability to search on Facebook. And one of the, the things that I did like on the old Facebook search was that you could search through posts, and that's yeah. not available. So if you want to do a search and see all the people who are talking about Lance Armstrong or the Gold Globes um, and making posts about that, <laughs> you can't do that with the new search. And that's yep. in part because they feel like the old search was so bad that it was better just to kill it off with the new search and then try to bring it back in a better form uh, in the, the coming weeks or months. How do, you wrote a post about how it sort of competes with Google. You know, you're the world's search expert. What, what are you thinking is going on at Google when they see this uh, uh, <laughs> search feature, and how do you think Google will react, if at all? Mass panic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's Why? mass panic over there. Why? No, it's not mass panic. It's um, I think my guess. I don't know, but my guess would be within Google, the reaction would probably be something like, "Hmm." Because I think that it's not what Google might have expected. It certainly wasn't what I had expected initially from Facebook. I, I thought they might give you some recommendations, like they might give you a tool. And, and you see some of this stuff like, um, you know, top restaurants in a city by likes, you know, and using the aggregate like data. And that's interesting. And that kind of competes directly with Google in a lot of ways. Like, you know, if you do a search for restaurants in a city, Google will either give you web search results or they give you local search results. And the web search results are heavily influenced by how people link. And then the, the local results are influenced by how people are rating on Zagat or how people are rating on, say, Google+. I might sneeze here in a minute, so I'm just warning you. I'm trying to stem it off. But the idea that you could go through and find the pictures that you most liked or the pictures that you most liked and commented upon, or that you can find um, things that two people like in particular, or that you can find you know, a restaurant that only your friends like, that is harder for Google to kind of kind of compete with. And especially in some of the professional services areas, I feel like this is potentially compelling, that I need a contractor. Who's the right contractor for me to use? Before we had search engines, we, we would have asked our friends. We would have said, hey, do you know a good contract? Do you know somebody I could use? Then we got search engines, and then we like to start typing that into these search engines that we don't really know. And then we start relying on like aggregate data, you know, how do people link, or what were people saying on Yelp? How were they rating this person? And what Facebook is potentially doing is bringing us back to being able to harness what our friends have to say on this in, in areas where maybe there is that kind of a data. And that is a place where I think Google might be thinking, okay, we need to take Google Plus and play up perhaps more the ability to get recommendations just from your friends. And what is this Google if, Plus that you speak of? If this of? take off, 
What's that? What is Google Plus? Oh, that's the service that Larry Page is really proud of, especially because all of Facebook's products are uh, really bad. John Toshak, what do you think? <laughs> of what? Uh, of the Facebook uh, graft search. <clears throat> well, I have uh, I got a lot of thoughts, and I feel like I'm echoing. Uh, so sorry about that. Am I echoing on your side? No. No. Um, uh, Facebook's good at teaching people uh, what is coming, and this uh, NLP that they have is going to be the way that you search in the future and find interesting things in your graph, and they have a whole stack of metadata that they're going to expose. I think there's going to be a lot of people who complain about it because, you know, people complain about that little news feed on the web edition where, you know, there, there was a whole, th I'm not even exactly sure if everyone sees everything that's going on there, but if you're on the web and you go into Facebook, there's a news feed and you can see what people are liking in real time. And this is just going to expose that, you know, and, and it, that kind of was kind of an uproar when it came out. Uh, but the, uh, the NLP stu uh, stuff is, the, is the, re the real thing. I wonder if they uh, did it organically. It sounds like they did. And I think that's uh, great. But I also see that, you know, there's going to be a downside. You know, people are going to search for uh, predatory searches. And then people are going to have to refine their privacy again. And that's why maybe Facebook's uh, easing into it. As far as Google goes, um, you know, they have kind of a fake NLP system uh, where you can type in, you know, questions in, in English and you can t and you can speak into them into the web into a microphone and it will bring you results and the results tend to be accurate it just has nothing to do with what you know the people you know and i say that the the plus which they're ramping up very quickly on uh... by forcing people to use it is not going to be that graph and they're going to have to open up uh, into different search mechanisms i think facebook's going to get so powerful that eventually all the other all the other sites, the social sites, the business sites, everything, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and everything, we're going to have to expose themselves to the Google search. Kevin, do you agree? Um, I, so, so I think there's a couple of problems with this. Um, one is that a lot of the likes um, that you that you've made are not actually um, real or persistent. You if you think people have been on Facebook for five years, they click like on a lot of things. And certainly, my my youngest son, I was watching him use Facebook the other day, and he was saying, oh, "I've got to go and delete more likes. I'm getting lots of stupid ads for these things that I liked three years ago." Um, and there's also um, somebody wrote an article saying how how because businesses have used like this to get free thing to drive up their Facebook likes, that means they've got a, there's a, there's a lot of like not great data in the in the in the, in the like graph there. A lot of people would have would have liked Coca Cola to. Um, get a free token or whatever. There, there were lots of you know, things that done that. That that, people, that was a, a way to increase your your rank on Facebook. So lots of companies did that. So that so this this there's I'm, I'm not completely convinced that this this like graph is is as valuable as they think it is. Um, the key thing that I see Facebook doing here is trying to get you know and and the examples they were giving is trying to get more intent based searching because that's what's monetizable and that's what Google has the advantage over them in because we when we want to actually do something or buy something we tend to search Google first um, whereas for Facebook you, you don't tend to search Facebook for that you tend to search Facebook for people yeah and by the way there's uh, I see comments and, uh, and and people have said it before uh, I mean Danny and Robert said it, it's not supposed to compete against Google well that's the first sign that somebody's going to compete against you is that they they decline decline to acknowledge or say they're not going to compete against you that's just obvious well, they're, they're totally going to take a, take over a, a, a part of the search that Google could search. This is a different kind of search. It, 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 it's not a link based search. It's like based search, which is it's, it's taking a different the time kind of away from somebody searching in one way and putting it into another thing. Uh, absolutely. Of course, of course, they're not going to. Of course, they're not going to spend the time on searching for restaurants that my friends like on Google. They're not even going to be searching on restaurants anymore at all on Google. They're going to be searching on Facebook for it if that profile is built out. Now, there's lots of problems that, that have been addressed. For one thing, 
hardly anyone does everything that they that they do on and, and admit it on Facebook. And the other side is that they lie on Facebook. They don't say they like things that just to like them, and then they start unliking them. It's like it's a uh, it's too willy nilly. It's not accurate. Google's got the algorithms and the engineering. Facebook's got the users. And Yelp and uh, Foursquare have the actual uh, people that are going to eat, like in the next ten minutes. So you know, there's there's much more engagement in, in those kinds of searches. Well, it's, it's not yeah. even a search, really. It's well, just no, a, I mean, everybody has a little bit of the data, though. I mean, so a little bit. It, it, well, it's it's interesting because now there's a whole wave of well, Facebook's data is dirty and the likes aren't real. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey. Would you like to buy a thousand links and influence whether or not somebody ranks number one on Google? Because that ain't that hard to do. And in fact, it is such a problem that Google rolled out their whole Penguin update last year because they got to fight the fake links that are out there. And yep. and that is a system that they've been dealing with for ten years, and it's not getting better. They're constantly trying to fight all these fake votes that are out there in in the the system that's happening. Well, I mean, that but, is the Danny, advantage right. of. Uh, yeah. of but that's, yeah, that's the good heart slow problem. Is that, that as soon as you start making something a metric, then people start trying to game the metric. Yeah, right. The, Basically, Google has done gameable. that for links um, and to some extent for web content, and mm -hmm. Facebook is about to do that. For, Go ahead, um, Robert. Um, for, this, the likes and for, is, you know, a bunch of stuff is, in here. Hold on, this is very anti-gameable because look at what's here. My friends have liked. To game this, you would have to buy off a bunch of my friends. And that is really, really difficult to do compared to the link farming that's going on. Now, you could get aggregate likes. So you right. could appear like you're popular in the world. You could buy 100,000 uh, accounts on Facebook and have some, somebody create that. I, I know people who do that. But you can't buy my friends. That's hard. Yeah, and the, but the I, flip side of that, Robert, is, is that you can't... Uh, the, you don't get the mass of data that you get. Uh, no, but it, the data crawling. that. Uh, well, it, the thing is, Facebook has both. It has both the mass. And in fact, it has three kinds of data, right? It has friend and mass and then Bing. And so you get three kinds of data when you do a search on. But on you also get. I mean, the, the problem with the. You know, I think Danny sort of said this in one of. I don't know if you've had more than one post on this. But uh, maybe the first post that you had on it, Danny, uh, you you talked about the issue of that this is incur this is uh, requiring at least initially behavior that a lot of people don't do, which is to like stuff. Well, right. I mean that. So when when Facebook, <laughs> if you go back to say 2007, when people were excited that Facebook might come out with search, that was that was the first thing that a lot of people said was. They are going to wipe out Google because they have all the activity from all the pages from across the web. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, "No, they don't. You know, they 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 do have a lot of information that's out there where people are liking this page and they're liking that page. But there are plenty of pages that people go to that they don't like. And so, <clears throat> they have a lot of holes in that sort of data. So the idea that they were going to just um, the idea that they were going to just suddenly take all the like data just from pages themselves and build a better web search, that was always going to be very problematic for them. It wasn't the, the perfect solution for them. And as it turns out, that's not what they did. They're not going out there and trying to apply their social like data that they have to web pages, which, by the way, is kind of something that Google is doing with Google+. Instead, they're trying to apply it to the data that they have just within Facebook, and it's probably a wiser strategy. They still have a lot of holes that are in there, and they're going to still have a lot Google of problems. What is this Google This is the second time you've mentioned it. I know. Well, you could you could mock it. There's a, there are significant numbers of people on Google Plus, and Google is getting data off of this. And in fact, I think Google looks a lot more wiser. Google in Plus is done not that. something to ignore. It's it's not it's right. not bad. It's a great way of seeing current information. Yeah, and, a, a la Google Currents, and it has users on it that have to. And the, and if you're in the Google system at all, anything, Docs, Gmail, anything, you basically have a Google profile, and that you're automatically on Plus. Plus, they're combining it. Plus, um, in addition, they're combining it with Drive. Your photos, you use an Android phone, it automatically uploads into the into Plus into into these uh, hierarchy. It's 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 fascinating what they're doing. It's still, they haven't educated anyone on actually how to do anything with it, but it's pretty fascinating what they are doing. Mm. I'll show it to you. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm just, I'm pointing out that uh, 
we're t the the scale here but i mean facebook is everywhere google plus is like a drop in the bucket well that's not true at all okay explain educate me well first of all you can go to many many websites and you find google plus buttons right alongside the the facebook one do you use those uh, I don't tend to use them, no. I use them all the time. I, I, I don't tend everything. to use the Facebook buttons either, so what, exactly. what's the issue there? But see, you mock that, but that Facebook button, I'm sorry, the, the Google Plus button being on that page has just given Google insight into the activity on that page because every time the button's loading, Google knows somebody's been to that page. Previously, Google knew a lot of what's going on on the web, but they also had holes and they didn't have this engagement activity in all these other places. So success number one, Google said, we're going to give you a button and if you use these Google Plus buttons and you put them out on your pages and people click them, you might rank better on Google. Surprise, surprise, publishers all over the yeah. place went out there and did that. Danny, let me show you something though. I did a search Google Plus restaurants near San Francisco or in San yep. Francisco and there is the slanted door and three people have been rating it underneath here. All yep. the other data came from Zagat when they bought Zagat. Now look at the same thing, you know, look at how many friends have, have liked the slanted door. Yeah, but that doesn't, the door. But, so, but we've had this before where say you do SEO studies and the SEO last year, um, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, where um, SEO Moz had like looked through all the factors and they said, "Aha! Look at this. We found. We looked at all the ranking factors and all the things that we analyzed as to what makes a page rank well on Google. Being liked a lot on Facebook is one of the number one factors." And you know, "Aha!" And everybody's like, "Aha!" And then you know, Matt Cuts from Google came up and he said, "Well, that's nice, but we don't use that data. Cross my heart, swear to die, we don't use it at all." All that told you was. However, Google was determining what was a good content, what was good content, had a strong correlation with what people actually seemed to like on Facebook. And so what you just showed there demonstrates the same things. No, 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 so no, no, no. No, no, no. You're missing. Okay. I trust my friends far more than I trust anything else. And oh, when yeah. I see 21 of my friends liking the slanted door, that's a restaurant I want to go to. And, is, and Google is, does not have my friends. No, my they friends don't. Are, my friends they, are not on Google Plus. They, they don't. They don't. My have family's that. not on Google Plus. Out of all the Iranians, my wife knows nobody is on Google Plus. Yes. So when you now do the Robert, do the same search for, um, I don't know, pick some city you've never been to before. Uh, I mean, search for search for a restaurant in a city I don't know, Duluth. Kansas, okay. Kansas. Duluth. Duluth. <laughs> yeah. Search for. I'll, I'm going to Duluth in the middle of this year, right? Um, didn't you a zombie probably don't apocalypse have a lot of friends there? in Duluth. I actually do, apparently, you know, because there's a big uh, marketing company out there. But the point is, you're absolutely right. When you do a search for restaurants in places where your friends have been, Facebook yeah. has a really compelling offer there. But well, if I mean, you're going to a place you've never been to before and your friends have never been to before, poof, that goes away. Yeah. That's and true. that's the, where the, the Zagat stuff the comes Duluth in. Very so, often. so yeah. again, the bigger takeaway is everybody has holes. Google will have some strengths. Facebook will have some strengths. And to go to what Steve was talking about, so you kind of want to, you know, well, Google Plus, who uses Google Plus? Well, Google is actually trying to get more and more people to do their reviews, not through Zagat, but through Google Plus. But again, when fact, there's not, Danny, when there's not friends, there are people. This yeah, restaurant, people. for instance, has 938 people like this. Let's go to Google Plus. I did the same search on Google Plus. Yep. There's no people, there's no warmth to these. Crickets. And that yeah, tells but what's me. What's number one, I, Robert? Show, zoom in because I can't see. Go back to Black, your number Black one Woods. thing. Black All right, Woods here. Come down so I can see it. It's got 16 reviews. Yeah. 18 it doesn't reviews. Have, it doesn't necessarily have check-ins, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go, well, yeah. you know, I didn't notice that there weren't check-ins there, therefore there's no warmth to it. I mean, I agree with you. It would also that's have the first, advantage of, of being Facebook close. App. That's, right. That's I mean, they, they can use the uh, the the uh, mapping to get close. You know, like the, in the proximity of you where you are in Duluth. Well, you can the already restaurants do. That are highly rated by you. You can already do on both services. You can do a search for uh, restaurants near Grandma Saloon and Grill Canal Park, right? Um, and it'll since you already know that place or near the Marriott, right? It it already lets you do searches on both services. The like Facebook that. does that. The, the both, new Facebook search does that. Them. Absolutely. Show me that. That I, I can't believe that. Here, hold on. Let me just uh, figure out something. Um, Kevin Marks, can you here. believe that? While we're waiting. Sorry. 
Can you believe that uh, what John doesn't believe can be done? Can be done. Well, they have GPS. I mean, but it just doesn't work that well. Hold on. Wow. It's like Foursquare. It's kind of hokey. Sometimes you switch cities, and it doesn't. Oh well, that's just you know. Here you you have to be like I, I found Foursquare is pretty good. I, four, you know, all this talk about restaurants, Foursquare is what I use for that. I use Foursquare. It's a search engine that does this very well. That's yeah, right. partly because I fed it a lot of information but, over by the, the way, last few years about what I like, but also because my friends are in there and what they like is in there. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think Foursquare is very useful for uh, restaurant search. It, it's very useful, but this is a direct attack on Foursquare. Here's a Facebook search. Restaurants near Old Chicago Duluth, which is a restaurant, in Duluth, Minnesota. And here's a map of how far they are from each other. So you can see it works. Well, and it, and it is an attack on Foursquare. At the same time, you've got people on Foursquare who are used to checking in, who are used to leaving reviews. It's already built into mobile, not having to figure it. And it works out fairly well. It does. You know, I'm it, on it. I'm a Foursquare yeah. fan, but there's a billion people on Facebook. How many people are right? On but the Foursquare? billion, the billion Agreed. people also works against them because you know you're a drop in the bucket on that. So the the incentive yeah. for you to contribute uh, in that kind of environment is less than it is to do. You it would in be Foursquare. really shocked. I I did some comparisons on Foursquare and Yelp and. Uh, Facebook's new search and Google Plus, and there's more data on the Facebook one about people's behavior. Now, Danny is right. You can get better reviews on Yelp and a little bit uh, better on Google Plus. So there, there still are some differentiators, but there's a lot more data on Facebook. I, you know, a billion people does matter. It really does matter, uh, particularly when you go into weirder places in the world. Okay. Well, this goes along with along with uh, with the conversation you know Steve and I had with uh, an analyst that said, "Well, there's there's gigantic data sets that are out there, and enterprises are going to try to solve them, and it's like boiling the ocean; they'll never get it." Um, you know, Teradata's tried to do it, SAS Institutes try to do it, and you don't hear about those companies as much anymore, and they're tr still trying to do the same thing, and. What makes a what makes a, a search better, a big data or or gigantic data set be search better, is if you knew what the other person or somebody that you trusted was doing, and not the, necessarily the person that you that uh, is following you and has liked it, but somebody you trust. So if you have a trust a, a, um, a circle of trust, so to speak, and you said I want the I want to know what that person is reading or I want to know what that person's doing, that's great. That's a really good implementation of a search or a uh, narrowing down of a data set on a, on a gigantic data set. And what Google's doing is kind of taking the gigantic data set and using <coughs> it, applying engineering to it and, and, and trying to solve the same problem. Eventually they're going to wind up in the same place. What we're seeing now is uh, the warm or the human interface with the natural language from Facebook, which is really interesting. Uh, because if you apply that into an enterprise, like you're searching, like, well, I want to find out all the sales accounts that did this, or I want to find out all the products that uh, had something about customer support here. That's fascinating. That's really that's really important, and that data would actually be accurate because it's going to look at the the cases that you've solved or the sales that you've done. That's that's a really good enterprise implementation. Yeah, well, what's really shifting here is the incentives for contributing this kind of data. That's where I think that uh, Facebook will have an enormous impact is that they're going to train everybody uh, to start paying attention to these signals and therefore possibly starting to contribute those signals. That's I, definitely what their hope is, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> well, I, I think that, you know, the, it, it tends to, you know, I mean, the, the good side of this is that people spend more time on Facebook. The bad side is I've, you know, been forced to actually somebody uh, named Buck keeps posting these great uh, pictures of the Beatles so I am actually now using Facebook for the first time and so I find that uh, using Facebook becomes uh, uh, it's initially interesting then it becomes uh, there's this moment where you realize that you've been stuck in Facebook for like half an hour so it's taking away time from like the rest of the world and real life and I think that that's a, that's a real barrier that they have because the extent to which you just sort of get yourself caught up in the stream 
and just sort of sit back and and learn all about stuff that you really don't care about for uh, until you get frustrated and then leave, uh, that's not creating an incentive model for contributing to the system. So I think that they have to balance those two things. I had an, uh, one point that's obviously tangential to this, but I think it illustrates where some of this will go. Uh, Rolling Stone just uh, uh, produced a uh, an iPad only version of the magazine. And it's interesting for a number of reasons, including the fact that this they're really going to kill the, the print book. Uh, there's just no reason for the print book anymore. Uh, this thing comes to you automatically. It's like two bucks in, or one dollar an issue. Now, obviously, they'll raise the price over time. But it's uh, w what was really interesting is at the end of the, uh, uh, you know, it's like two clicks in the new uh, Apple's newsstand in order to get the subscription. Uh, at the end of the subscription, it said, if you give us your phone number, email address, and one other piece of information, we'll give you an extra month. Yep. I went, bang, you know? Yep. This is how they're going to start to, uh, they're going to essentially pay users to give them the kind of information that they're looking for. Exactly. It only got two stars on the uh, App Store. Yeah, it Why sucks, but, you know, for a dollar, uh, you know, a month, it how could it be bad? I don't know because I pay a dollar a month and they just deliver it to me by <laughs> mail. It's exactly this is I've got, I've, well, I'm getting it by mail, and you can get it in Flipboard anyway. So why do I need? The, no, no, you can't get it in Flipboard. I mean, you they, can get a lot. They you still, can get you Rolling go, Stone in Flipboard. Sorry, you go to the web page. Uh, just try listening to the uh, Steve Stills uh, uh, special uh, track that he recorded in 1970 with Jimi Hendrix. Uh, you click on that on the web page and it, on, on your iPad, and it goes boink. Nothing happens. That they, they have to get really onto the iPad, not to iOS. So some things from the chat room. Christina said that uh, finding a person is still a challenge, not with this new search. If they're on Facebook and if they haven't totally locked down all their privacy or or used a fake name or something, you can find them really quickly here. Um, some other things. Um, what what else is going on? Uh, oh, somebody said uh, in 12 months when you ask your wearable computer for good restaurants, who's going to feel warm? Murray McDonald said that. That's the whole point of this. You're going to see likes in real time or check-ins, and you're going to walk down the street and know that five of your friends or five people that uh, are, you know, friends of yours or friends of friends are at this bar and that's going to influence where you go with your wearable computers that's the whole point of yeah the this thing part. that's going to the thing that's going to be uh paid for you know the device this wearable device that you get is going to be subsidized by your permission to deliver the data into the system that's number one number two what's going to cost uh advertisers and marketers is going to be access to that data yep Right. By the way, uh, at, at CES, we we should also cover uh, what I saw at CES. I saw Prime Sense uh, uh, sensors. Uh, they're the sensor. They're the company that licensed the sensor in this Microsoft Connect sensor. So you see that sensor and see how big it is. Um, now uh, they showed me a, a new sensor, which is higher resolution. It's a, a stick of gum. It's it's a eighth inch thick or maybe yeah an eighth inch thick something like that it's like a stick of gum it's like one finger it's sixty dollars instead of two hundred dollars and it's higher resolution and it, it is mind-blowing so i saw a company that they had in their booth they're putting them overhead at uh, Walmarts, and they are doing shopping analytics. They can see when you pull a box of Cheerios off the shelf in real time, and they can offer you things on a, t on a tablet or on a surface, a projector right next to it, and say, hey, we just noticed you uh, like Cheerios. Would you like a second box for 30% off? You know, or try this. You like Cheerios? Try this other brand down at the bottom shelf. We'll give that to you for a dollar because it's a new brand that we're launching. They can do so much stuff by tracking you now. And by the way, those three D sensors can do face detection far better than this two D camera that I'm staring into, and can do things like even a projector on a wall where I can touch the wall and it can tell how 
how hard I'm pressing the wall. It is amazing this technology and where it's going. And it's sixty dollars today. In what eighteen months, that'll be thirty dollars. And another eighteen months, it'll be fifteen dollars. Another eighteen months out, out, after that, it'll be you know six dollars. So this stuff is coming and coming in mass. We're gonna walk down the street and be tracked whether we like it or not. And no, no, we're not gonna. Be, well, we're gonna we be walking be down the street, and we, we are, are going to. Be we are gonna I, like it because we're gonna. All our little toys are gonna be paid for by no, us giving permission to be tracked. We're, we're gonna. Well, you, we're you gonna get paid. That. Our you Facebook. say that, but I do say that. You say that, um, Steve. But that's exactly what Eric Schmidt said about how we were going to all get our phones. And um, then they rolled out the Nexus one, and it was like, yeah, you can pay $500 for it. And even when we've gotten down to the um, yeah, Nexus but hold 4, on a second. The I mean, we've come system. down to $300 and there's no contract. But I think we're still quite a ways off from just being handed out the most. How did they get, no, hang on a second. How did they get uh, the price of Android phones down? so that it could uh, have the kind of market penetration that it now has. They gave away the operating system. So yeah. that was a self-fulfilling prophecy on Schmidt's part. He knew that they were going to give away the operating system. Yeah, that's, that that's 50 bucks out of the cost of the unit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, and the, unit, really? the new units cost 600 which is a two, you know, gigantic markup. Uh -huh. uh, I, yeah, okay. It's, and then, it's not, uh, it's a small it's, it, I mean, pittance. Jonathan Schwartz said this about six seven years ago when he was at Sun he said that everything was going to be that the hardware was going to be free and cloud computing kind of says the same thing too so uh, you know history is on the side of those who say what I'm saying yeah. well who's going to be hurt in that in that realm of the co current companies well why are you implying that it's going to be Apple that's going to be hurt I'm anybody, not anything I'm asking any, you. Anybody, uh, so w the trends that I'm seeing in product are if you're not predictive and you're not uh, personalized, you're going to be at, in harm's way. I.e., do you know something about people? You're probably pretty safe. If you don't know anything about people, for instance, Samsung doesn't know anything about me, even though I carry around a Samsung phone once in a while. They give all that data to Google. Google knows a lot about me. They know what searches I do. They know what emails I send to. You know, if I send an email to Danny Sullivan, they know something about that. They can see the content into it. Uh, they they know the searches I do. If I if I find out I have if a weird people disease, really thought that they could see it, which of course is correct. They can see it. They can they're, see they're it because they're already putting I understand. I understand. They, but they can see if it. They people can't really, if people thought that they were actually that there was an intelligent mind there going, oh really. <laughs> You're looking for that, yeah. You know, By if the they way, were the, taking the the natural language processing of your email, do you think that people would be happy about that? They won't be happy until they get paid for it. At which well, point no, they'll say, "Sure." They're perfectly happy with it now, because that you're you're relying. First of all, you're assuming that they don't know. They may well know about it, and certainly there's been plenty of things that have come up in the past where they've been had their attention raised to it. They just don't really seem to care. Of people don't really they, seem to care. No, they don't care. You could say people care about privacy. Of course they care about I privacy. Didn't, I, am I saying that? I didn't well, say no, that but people I mean, care. People say, of course they care, but if, if people really cared about privacy, you wouldn't have people on Facebook. How many times have they had privacy things happen? Nobody quits. Nobody or people are that uh, bothered about it. Some people do. Some yeah. people do. It's a marketing a mass thing. number of people... We, you know, we have a very cavalier attitude to this sort of stuff. If we were that concerned about privacy, we wouldn't have credit cards. Can you a number of credit card no. data spills that have happened? Right. We exactly. just kind of shrug our shoulders and go, "Well, that's just part of the way uh, it is." Go into Safeway and watch how many people an hour pull out their Safeway card. Why right. do they take that card that tracks them through everything? Oh, because they get paid a dollar less on a bottle of wine. That's right. You know? And that's why people notice it and they pay attention to it is when it provides value to them. Well, no, they don't know what they don't notice at all is what on earth is happening when they use the card. All they notice, in my view, is if I use this card, I get a dollar off. And when you in the last year, you know, there was this whole story about how the there was this guy from Target who was this guy who was upset because Target started sending his daughter pregnancy information. And he was like I'm really upset. You got to stop doing this. You got to stop doing this. And it turned out that his daughter was pregnant. 
because and Target knew it because of the things that she was <laughs> buying and he, through through her purchases, and he didn't know it. And so that's one of the rare cases where you suddenly go, "Wow, they really do know a lot about ourselves," and, and they do. But do you know the number of discussions in my years in covering tech where you have seen some lawmaker or legislator decide that we need to regulate what's on date on store for us about our purchasing habits zero never uh, see that come up that's not true uh, danny I, I you know when i visited the congress uh, several congressmen talked to me about it but they're unable to do anything about it well, first of all they don't understand the oh, technology oh, no, no 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 robert wait, wait, let's just stop okay their uh, campaigns there may be are being funded it, by people contrast who that are making to the money number of fcc like reviews the number of FTC complaints, yeah. the number of senators writing letters, the number of Congress people writing letters to Google or Facebook, or if it's an internet thing and it's a big new internet company coming along, they not only notice it, but they start making noises about it. But if it's bricks and mortar doing whatever bricks and mortar have always been doing, that doesn't seem to get the kind of attention. Kevin? Anyway. That's, I think that Danny's right. I think that that is people are worried about um, this tracking, but but that's because some of it is visible. And I think what will happen with the Facebook thing is because it's suddenly being made visible, even though that tracking has been there and been used to target ad to us for years, uh, people will suddenly get more grumpy about it and paranoid and, and start tweaking it about in the same way that they have um, with 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 some of the targeted stuff for Google. Um, whereas you know the credit reporting bureau bureaus and the people like that who we're actually compiling dossiers on us that are full of nonsense. We don't get to um, worry. We don't worry about those um, to the same extent until one of them, you know, and again until we're denied a credit card because of them. Then we have to go back and look at it. So let me ask a, a, a orthogonal question: uh, Has anybody been following what's been going on with Whole Foods and their CEO? Uh, barely. Yeah. So uh, evidently, the the CEO has a, a couple of years ago or. Uh, when the um, Health Care Act uh, was passed, uh, right, thanks, uh, he, he, he compared uh, Obamacare uh, to uh, communism, he called it socialism, uh, and uh, he was forced to retract this uh, mostly because uh, the Whole Foods customer base is largely to the left. Yeah. And, and he's come out with another one this uh, this Cuz they're in the cities. Yeah. And but he, also because, you know, the, it's a fairly uh organic. You know, right. It's hippy dippy, you know, uh <laughs> I was just trying to see if there's a stereotype. There. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying not to say it, but so uh and now he, this week he said something about how it's he was wrong. It's not uh, socialism, it's fascism, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I really mean that is basically what he's saying. Perhaps he doesn't understand the difference between the two words. But so, well, I think he'll probably about <coughs> discover the um, discover how capitalism works. Yeah, well, the that's the question. Is always right, and that's what I think you're sort of surfacing with your, you know, with your theory, Danny, that nobody's really caring or looking uh, is. You know, in this case, it, do people care? Are they looking? Are they paying attention? Are they going to vote with likes or dislikes in this case? And is it going to have an impact? Or is this just going to proceed slowly to the point where uh, it'll just become a, you know, an offer that you accept, a sort of a Groupon on my, on mass? Well, if you, if you recall, the, didn't the, the Chick-fil-A CEO, actually, I forgot if it's Chick-fil-A or the other chicken thing, um, yeah, boy, you know, but anyway, he did something. I forget what he did, but uh, it caused a whole bunch of people to. Um, it's the uh, yeah, it caused it like you know a ruckus wherever it was. Anyway, right? I think they had the largest after that. business uh, boom that came out of that. Uh, you know, not only did the people that disliked what he had to say uh, boycott them, but then everybody who liked what he had to say uh, went and bought ten times more. So. I, I think that it was a net positive for him. Right. And the people who were boycotted got hungry after they did that and went out to eat anyway. <laughs> okay. you know, that's the new style of revolution. And so, the same thing with the Papa, the pizza guy, Domino's. He right. said something. 
And then the profits went up. So I, I'm not trying down, to the shift the conversation as much as sort of underline uh, the question to Danny. Do you really think that what you said is, is true? I said so many things. That well, people don't care? Yeah, that people don't care and that they don't notice. People and, do care when there is a huge major privacy breach that I guess really goes to the core of, of what their concerns would be. Um, but the number of things that we have had happen on Google or Facebook that have been privacy issues, for the most part, people seem to shrug them off as, well, that's just stuff that happens. And basically it's free and, you know, we should know better anyway. That's in this country. There's there's uh, an apathy toward it. Uh, There's a a false uh, tenacity toward uh, protecting it, but there's an apathy toward actually doing something about it. I think that's true of every thing, every revolution in the United States. There, and that's why there aren't any. Things are too so good here. There, so, there are lots um, of people freaked out by this stuff, by the way. Uh, you know, and, and there's lots of people who are changing their Facebook behavior or think, rethinking how they behave online because of all this tracking that's coming. Um, you know, and, and I'm thinking about I'll, it because I, I want to signal to the world what I want out of this world. So I'm, I removed all brands from my Facebook page except for tech brands because I want to talk to people about tech. So I, even I'm playing with all, all this stuff, right? No, well, you're being Although, massively uh, controlled by their, uh, uh, you know, obscured algorithms. I mean that. No, I mean, the algorithms are easy to figure out. I mean, yeah, I'll, if you spend I'll add all that day I've doing had, it. Um, I had a conversation with um, both the uh, a guy that I do training with and my niece actually, who's like 22, and I was struck that neither one of them are using Facebook, right? You know, they're both young. They're both the kind of people you think would be using Facebook. Uh, my niece moved from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram, and now she only uses Instagram. And, you know, her feeling was, I just didn't want to deal with all the drama and all the connections and all this stuff that you're kind of out there. And the, the trainer, when I was talking to him today, he was like going, well, you know, I just don't have the time for it. And it was like he preferred Twitter and, and Instagram simply because – he didn't feel like he had to go back and respond and actually deal with all these friends that he doesn't have time to necessarily deal with in that way. It was much easier for him to sort of be in one way. So neither one of them were like, I'm shutting it all down because of privacy stuff or whatever. And so we can focus on that, but I wonder if you know part of the bigger challenge Facebook is going to have isn't nobody's going to want to share all these likes. It's just that people are going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of done using Facebook. Uh, they'll come back to it when they see value in it. And there, there will be a lot of a lot of value. Well, and that goes to what Steve said, though. There's going to be value in it if, when I go to a restaurant, there's a sign at the restaurant, or I get my check, and it says, "If you check in right now, um, we're going to take 10% off your bill." You know, then then there's value. <laughs> yeah, I'm checking in. Sure, what do I do? Can I do that and pay with Square at the same time? <laughs> yeah, you don't even need Square. This is all software. Well, it's it's nice, but you know the rest of <laughs> verify it at one point, right? You know, did you really check in? How do I know? <laughs> I th- I think Tina is looking to get paid for by the sneeze. <laughs> okay, anything else we want to talk about, Robert? Oh God, um, I you know talking about this this stuff. I was at SRI, which is the uh, famous Silicon Valley lab that invented the internet, basically the first uh, ARPA net. One of the first ARPANET nodes was there and uh, invented uh, the GUI. Doug Engelbart invented the mouse there and invented Siri. And uh, so they're showing me a new calendar that's coming out next month that's using context, using uh, looking into your uh, email and looking into your calendar. It's really a CIA front, isn't it? Uh, pretty much, you know. I mean, uh, there's a whole arm that does stuff for, uh, you know, the government. Thank you, tell. The government, the government quotes. Oh, yeah, yeah. SRI. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, th- this stuff is becoming real and, and it's going to have both positive connotations and it's going to have negative ones. It's, you know, just like a car, you know, cars let me drive around and have a free life, but they kill 40,000 people a year and we still drive. I know? had a Siri experience, uh, with my car this week. I, you know, I'm basically helpless if I, if I, I can't find out anything on Siri. I sat, I got a, a blowout. I pulled off the road. <laughs> Say that again slowly, because I think people misheard 
What, what? Siri, I've fallen and I can't get up. Exactly. Siri, Siri are you there? Go on. I'm, you know, this is a softball. I'm telling you, make fun of me. Please continue. We already did. We did. Oh, that's it? Actually, Steve, one thing I saw. I haven't Steve finished the story. Though. You should get this thing from Phillips. It's just a little pendant. You put it around your neck. And if you fall, the motion detector knows that you've fallen. And it'll just call for help for you automatically. So, hey, you don't need Siri. So it'll out. automatically check me into the hospital. It'll do everything for you. Okay. Um, so I I pulled off the road, and I was God knows where. So first I said to Siri, where am I? And it told me where I was. <laughs> I said, then I thought about it for a while. Then I tried to use the map. I started playing Highway to Hell. I tried to use the map. Out of nowhere. I, I couldn't get the map to work because it was stuck on a previous search going from uh, here to somewhere else. And then I finally figured, I said gas station. And it showed me 15 gas stations, one of which was a block away. And then I went over there and they fixed the tire. So in other words, I'm basically helpless uh, unless Siri can fix my problem almost immediately. I think that's going to really start to escalate for a lot of people. That they're going to use Siri, find it it's effective for all the reasons that we've talked about in the past. Namely, it's less mouse clicks, uh, you know, to get to where you want to go, and it talks to you so you don't have to take your eye off the uh, the wheel. Well, I would I would mock you, except that you know the experience I think with GPS is that. I think people are starting to forget there were other ways to navigate, such as using, I don't know, maps or memorizing locations. Right. But I mean, this is, my, you know, I, I don't want to mock you either, but, you know, I never use search. I, I try and figure out who I know knows where I should go. And I get that kind of comment, which is, you know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, that's not a call at all. We A few years ago, we had a... Uh, we had a conference, right? We had one of our, our big search marketing conferences, and there was a panel. It was all local search, and all the local search people wanted to go out to eat in New York, and they all joked that there they were like 10 local search marketing experts who know everything you could want to know about how to search for local information, and they ended up backing a cop on the street where they should go eat. <laughs> they, <laughs> they still found that easier. <laughs> it, I agree. I, I think, you know, I think Dunkin search Donuts. is great just as long as everybody else does the search and then I ask them and they tell me. Okay. <laughs> I, I went to the um, Source 13 conference yesterday and there was a um, chat from Google there, Jason Spiro, who was talking about this stuff um, and the number of mobile searches and one of the examples he gave was um, the Priceline app that's, you know, get me a hotel room app and, and he said 82% um, of people using that app booked a room less than a day before they arrived and 35 percent booked within one mile of the hotel they went to so basically people are just are using this as okay get me a hotel now um rather than booking in advance which is which is you know pretty interesting well there's a whole uh, there's a whole app called hotel tonight which helps you find hotels for tonight so so for instance if you're at my birthday party tonight at the uh, saint francis and you get drunk and you can't drive home you pull up hotel tonight. Oh, there's a cool deal for a hundred dollars on a hotel room. You know, w within a mile of us. That that's that happens all the time. <laughs> so context sensitive. Uh, Absolutely. Lack of search. It's, you know, we're going into a that weird poke, world. I think you have a real app. I, you know, I, I, another company, Tagwhat, this week showed me a new a new app that as you walk around. It shows you actionable Facebook posts within a mile of you. So you're walking down through a shopping mall, and it'll tell you, "Oh, the Gap is offering you, uh, you know, thirty percent off of jeans and stuff like this." And that's just the start. That's just a crude start at what this stuff is going to be. That's Minority the Report. It's totally Minority Report. Think about that 3D sensor over your head at Walmart. You you touch a box of Cheerios, and your app starts binging. Hey, don't buy Cheerios today. You know, first of all, your doctor might even uh, say that's not approved. <laughs> you know, um, 
but but Procter and Gamble is probably going to say, "Hey, we're trying to launch a new brand. You know, buy a box of this stuff, and we'll give it to you." Well, that's for, basically uh, what they do do in the in the market already. It's you know they just don't stock any of the things that you want. <laughs> All right. So, uh, is there anything else that we want to talk about before I wrap this up? Um. No, there's not. I just, Facebook, I'm just trying Facebook to get you, you. Usually, after we get off uh, the air, then you say, "Oh, we didn't talk about." It. That's what Kevin does. So, well, you know, we could talk so about the transplant. We never got back to that, but oh, you know, it's all right. Oh yeah, well, could you explain that since you insist? Oh yeah, it's a fascinating story. It was they. It was in the LA Times yesterday, and it turns out that there's a certain kind of infection that you can get in your gut that's very, very difficult to get rid of and that um, they try to treat it with antibiotics and everything and, 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 and that they work sometimes but then sometimes it reoccurs and it comes back and what they found was that if they actually did a fecal transplant like took you know crap from one person and put it into another person that it actually had like a 90 percent success rate in, in clearing up this infection so it's <laughs> giving them a got, whole new infection you have got to read the article because it happens in the software industry you're reading the article and you're like oh, and i'm reading the article and I'm like, really and then of course the things in your mind you're like so how exactly do you do a fecal transplant, right? <laughs> like, like what, what? And it, so, you it's know, like mouth to mouth <laughs> surgery, or is it? It turns out what they do is they get um, a feces from a donor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not kidding you, right? They get a donor, they take freshly donated feces, they mix it in warm, salty water, and then you have a nose tube that goes into you. Into, oh, yeah. No, but this is okay because as the article pointed out, it may, completely bypasses your ability to either smell or taste the fecal transplant when it's happening. But if you were squeamish, apparently there is a um, rectal transplant a, a yeah. procedure that can be done as well. It rectifies. Saved the by the, rectifies. the bell. Oh, Thank you for that. Jeez. I, actually, uh, I did think about one thing. I saw the uh, new black... <laughs> <laughs> all this, all this talk Alarms about are going feces, off. All this, talk, all this talk about feces and rectal and stuff uh, got reminded me that I saw the BlackBerry, uh, the Rim BlackBerry 10 last week, and I, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> okay. Will you type in some document <laughs> the connection between <laughs> rectal and impressed? <laughs> It, it's rectal in motion. He was trying to find the connection between crap and Blackberry. You know, <laughs> there you go. Because it has had Crackberry. Then you thought crap. It has had that connection for, for six years because since Steve Jobs, six years ago, last week, introduced the iPhone, the Blackberry has been crap. And now they finally have reacted to that announcement six years ago with a decent product. And uh, so that's worth calling out. And how do you think that's going to go for them? Uh, it it will stop the bleeding. It won't get anybody on this show hot and bothered. It'll keep people who are RIM customers possibly considering RIM. What's, and, the, uh, what's unique about this? The keyboard actually is pretty nice. As you're typing, it, it's, an, it's, like, it's nice like the iPhone or, or an Android. It's got like a head typing or something? It, look at it puts words all over your keyboard, and you swipe the words up. So I could actually type probably 30 to 40 percent faster on the Rim 10 than I can on my iPhone because of that predictive word uh, look ahead kind of thing. Um, the email client, I I haven't played with it enough to say that the email client is better than the one in Apple, but it's certainly more integrated with Facebook and other and your exchange email and your Gmail email all on one stream. So it's potentially better, but I, I need a, a good month on it before I can really definitively say the email is better. But it Have looks they fixed better. that uh, App Store, the BlackBerry App Store? Yeah, that all, was a big all, problem. The App Store is better. The, the feel of the device is better. It feels better than an Android. It's smoother on scrolling up and down. It doesn't have that jankiness that a lot of the Android devices have. It, 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 they did a nice job on the on the... Uh, look and feel of the phone. It, it feels nice in my hand. It 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 does come up to Apple's quality level. It just doesn't have enough apps. I mean, they're bragging about having uh, thirty thousand apps converted, but you know, when you're competing with ecosystems that have a million apps, you're really in a deep hole. And so, you know, I'm not going to go out and rush out and wait in line overnight and buy one. 
no, that's not going to happen. But it, if somebody is, is still a RIM fan and just won't go to Apple or won't go to an Android device uh, for whatever reason, maybe their boss is you know stuck in the mud and just says, no, we're sticking with RIM for right now, this is a, a much better phone than they've had in the, on the market before. Uh, Kevin, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't uh, ask you to say a, a couple of words about uh, Aaron. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, it's been a, it's been a week now um, since we found out about Aaron's suicide, and um, I've been reading pretty much not much else but tributes to him and his work over the last week, and I recommend um, you do that too to understand what, what we've lost there and what you know how the, the prosecutorial overreach and so on. But in particular, I think. Um, the video, the 22-minute video of him talking about how we stopped SOPA, I really recommend watching that. If you've, if, you've, if you've watched this show, you can spend 22 minutes watching that, and I think that will give you a, a real sense both for him and for the, the, the future of the Internet that he was looking for and that many people have resolved to bring on the, to continue his work. Um, there's, um, there's a memorial for him next week in, at the Internet Archive in San Francisco, and there's, a, there's another gathering on tonight um, because it's the anniversary of the um, Internet blackout for SOPA today, and the, that's, that, there's people getting together for that in San Francisco. And there's, a, there's also, I think there's a memorial service in New York tomorrow. Um, so that, you know, that, that's, that was a real shock to me this week, and if I... You know, I've, if you've been following my Twitter feed, you basically see me tweeting more bits and pieces about Aaron for for, for, for all week because he was someone who, um, for me, he was he was someone who sort of came out of the internet and, and and visited us. That was that was the weird thing about the experience meeting him ten years ago because you had someone who was on a mailing list and he would you know, this this fifteen year old turned up and talked brilliantly about everything and visited everyone. Um, um, Danny last Danny Danny Bryan last night said everyone said Aaron was shy, but somehow he managed to know everyone in the world, and it's, that was pre that was pretty impressive. Well, Dave Weiner uh, wrote something where he uh, reminded us about uh, some sort of thread running through this and uh, Gene Kahn's death uh, many years ago, which ha had a certain uh, resonance in the same way. Uh, sort of, you know, I mean, it, it's it's not right to. Uh, roll up <clears throat> all sorts of socio-political uh, uh, scenarios uh, uh, into something about suicide. You know, suicide is a, is a terrible thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully that people will take uh, any kind of uh, expression of depression or whatever um, as a, a warning sign for that and, and try and do what they can to help. Uh, but I think that the you know what the government did uh, in this case uh, was the exact opposite of having any sense of uh, 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 you know it just they overreached is is uh, is so not the right word for what happened there. Anyway, I, we don't usually talk about this kind of stuff, but I noticed that you've been very very. Uh, prolific about this and uh, uh, and I appreciate that and I'm sure others do okay uh, just once around the table uh, Robert Scoble anything you want to wrap up with mm, no that, you know Aaron Aaron's death hit me pretty hard because I met him when he was I don't know 14 at a TechCrunch event and with his dad I think and you could instantly tell he was going to be somebody who did something interesting in life you know I, I had no idea he would uh you know, help start Reddit and do all the things I've read about over the last uh, year, but or a Creative Commons, or he he was involved in the RSS standard, uh, the the standard part of RSS, not the Dave Weiner part of RSS. But um, yeah, we we are we missed a uh, you know he he left a big hole in the industry, and um, kudos to him for spending twenty he was twenty six right or twenty eight, you know. He's been a big part of my life for the last twelve or thirteen years. So, Danny, uh, you know, I was never fortunate to to actually meet him. Um, I wrote a short thing when it happened on Saturday because I was as shocked as anybody. And what I remembered most of him about was this sort of more the the fifteen year old kid aspect 
who kind of came out of nowhere and um, I was encountering him because he had started the unofficial Google blog and he was out there kind of chronicling everything that Google was doing in all sorts of interesting ways and finding all these little uh, just tidbits that I just I thought it was fascinating and I I was trying to find the article about how he apparently made his first trip out to Google and I, I can't remember which publication had it but it sounded like he was just sort of dazzled and excited and you know it was this amazing thing where he had, had built this stature up almost not even trying and then gets invited out there and kind of gets to go to running around the candy store or whatever which always kind of kind of stayed with me and touched me but uh, you know it was just sad to hear what had happened and then there was so much more he would have been involved with. I, I just thought much more you could say about that other than it's, it's kind of a tragedy. John? Yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, I did not know him either. Uh, it's amazing how much uh, somebody like that uh, could uh, accomplish, somebody so young so could accomplish so much in such a short period of time. I mean, accomplished more in 12 years or whatever than most people accomplish in their lifetime. And the uh, impact on the Internet... Um, on uh, you know RSS and uh, and Reddit and, and and SOPA are you know going to be long long lasting uh, you know so we'll, we'll we'll experience what he's done for years to come. I guess all I can say is rest in peace. Okay, I want to uh, thank uh, Rackspace and particularly Rob Lejess for helping us to uh, do this show. I want to thank uh, New Tech and the TriCaster uh, for turning this into video. I want to thank our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. Where's the arm? There it is. And uh, I want to thank uh, John Toshek. Thank you, Steve. Danny Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Scoble. Thanks for having me on again. And Kevin Marks. I want to thank everybody in the chat room and everybody who showed up and uh, hope you show up again next time. See you soon. Bye-bye.